Hey, everyone. I'm Amy Scott, host of How We Survive. And this is Burning Questions, our series where we answer what you want to know about the climate crisis. For decades, scientists have been sounding the alarm about the Earth's rising temperatures. But now, with global temperatures breaking records and increasing extreme weather, not a day goes by without hearing the words climate change, climate change, climate change. But just because we hear about something all the time doesn't mean we necessarily understand what it means. Take the number 1.5, as in 1.5 degrees Celsius. It's the number we've been hearing for years is the maximum increase in temperature the Earth can really handle before all sorts of terrible things start to happen. On the surface, though, one and a half degrees doesn't sound like that big of a number. So we decided to talk to some climate experts to dig into what that number actually means, not just for the planet, but for us humans. So today's burning question, what's the deal with one and a half degrees? We've been told over and over again that to avoid climate calamity, we need to limit global warming to no more than one and a half degrees Celsius or 2.7 degrees Fahrenheit. So where did that number come from and what does it mean? So 1.5 C threshold refers to an average global warming of 1.5 degrees Celsius above what's called the pre-industrial period. And what do we mean when we say pre-industrial? At NOAA, we usually define it as 1850 to 1900, because that is generally before we saw the rise in greenhouse gases, but also coincides with a period of time where we have a good enough representation of observations across the planet where we can actually generate a data set of actual information for that period. One and a half degrees Celsius or 2.7 degrees Fahrenheit doesn't sound like a lot, right? It seems like nothing, because like I woke up this morning, it was like 71 degrees, and it's now 82. This is Fahrenheit. So you think, well, I'm, I'm okay. But what we're talking about is a global average temperature. So it's not about it's really cold in New York or Massachusetts right now. It's really hot in Trinidad or Florida right now. It's about the global average. And it's uncanny how that global average has been so consistent as it has been. And even though we have seen where we've had huge cold spells in parts of the world, and we've had huge hot spells, that that average still seemed to balance out. But now the averages are going up and a change in average global temperature of 1.5 or 2 degrees is enormous with respect to the biodiversity that the planet can support at those average temperatures. As for how the world settled on that threshold, let's go back to Paris 2015. Ah, Paris. That's when leaders from nearly 200 countries gathered for the United Nations Climate Conference, COP21. Going into the conference, world leaders had agreed to a goal of limiting global warming to less than two degrees Celsius above pre-industrial levels. Well, for certain countries, two degrees Celsius is well beyond what they can withstand. Um, small island nations, especially in vulnerable ecosystems also, can be drastically um, impacted. And in Paris, a group led by the Marshall Islands, which faces catastrophic sea level rise from global warming, pushed for a more ambitious goal. It must send a message to the world that if we are to win the battle against climate change, the fossil fuel era must draw to a close. So the mantra became 1.5 to stay alive. And that's how we put the 1.5 limit as the goal for global efforts to sustain the climate and the life as we know it today. In the end, 195 nations and the EU 
adopted the Paris Climate Agreement. They pledged to hold global warming to well below two degrees Celsius and pursue efforts to limit warming to one and a half degrees. Now, pursue efforts sounds pretty vague and non-committal, right? But getting 195 countries to agree to anything was a pretty big deal. And since then, the science has only become more clear. We've seen the deadly heat waves and drought, destructive wildfires and storms and flooding, the ocean acidification, vanishing glaciers and sea level rise from the warming we've already caused. Beyond one and a half degrees, things get even worse. So the, um, the modeling that people have been carrying out talks about 1.5 as the point at which we reach and surpass tipping points. And these tipping points are like planetary boundaries. It's like dominoes. Once it starts, you cannot stop it. You start having permafrost melt. And when permafrost melts, methane is released. And what happens is more methane bombs coming out means more warming, more heat being trapped. So there's a a feeling that even though there is thinking, that exceeding 1.5, but aggressively playing the drawdown game will save us from worst case scenarios. But there are those that think "Mm, the feedback loops will already have been triggered and it could be very, very dangerous. So where are we today? According to NASA, the average global temperature has increased by at least 1.1 degrees Celsius since 1880. That's about 1.9 degrees Fahrenheit. But last year, the hottest year on record, some data shows we passed one and a half degrees of warming. It's going to take many years before we know if we've permanently crossed that threshold. But most climate scientists say it's all but inevitable as the world keeps extracting and burning fossil fuels and greenhouse gas emissions keep rising. Well, I think one and a half degrees as a, as a goal that's achievable is dead. I think actually two degrees as a goal that is achievable is probably dead as well. And it's not because we've already crossed the two degree threshold permanently or one and a half degrees permanently. It's because there's a huge amount of inertia in the system. If we had started 30 years ago being serious about climate policy as opposed to just going to meetings, then we might be in a position right now to actually stop warming at one and a half or two degrees. But that didn't happen. Before you despair, David says it could have been a lot worse. We're actually making a lot of progress overall. Uh, 15 years ago, the world was on track for four or five degrees Celsius of warming. Now we're on track for maybe two and a half or maybe three degrees of warming. And that's the real measure of progress. And one of the things we have to recognize is that we're even though we're making progress, we're in for a significant amount of climate change. We need to get ready. We need to help the different municipalities around the United States. We need to help different communities around the world understand what does this mean? How do you get ready? How do you respond? And not pretend that we're going to Uh, uh, avert 1.5 degrees or 2 degrees just because we wrote it down on a piece of paper. David has argued that a temperature target isn't the right goal. One reason is that the temperature is naturally variable. We see this right now. Temperatures are back up at about 1.5 degrees. They'll come back down a little bit as we pass the El El Nino phase. So there's a lot of variability that has really nothing to do with climate policy. And so you have to get goals. The, the, The goals that you really use to drive policy have to be connected to things that firms and governments have some control over, like emissions. So that's one one reason. The other reason to be concerned about those goals is that they just never were really achievable. They were easy to agree because everyone agreed collectively we should do more, but no country individually was responsible for doing more. And that was a recipe for a highly ambitious set of goals that weren't achievable. And I don't think that's a sign of failure. That's just a sign we didn't design the, the, the goals correctly in the first place. And now there's a big discussion about how to design better goals. And that's that discussion's overdue. But for now, world leaders aren't giving up on one and a half degrees. The heads of last year's COP28, along with the coming COPs 29 and 30, recently launched an effort they're calling a roadmap with a view to keeping one and a half degrees Celsius within reach. Mm -hmm. 